It's as different as chalk and cheese, but we might not know where that phrase comes from. But once you find out which county we're in with Escape today, then you will. In today's show, I'll be helping a couple take that leap to the country and buy their very first property together. It all starts very positively. This is an amazing sized room, fabulous. Yeah, nice, like it. But then our mystery house stirs things up. OK, so it's a challenge, the house. Today, Escape is in Wiltshire, whose southern chalk downs could not be more different to the northern pasture land that provides grass for the cows that make cheese. There's a difference. But the one thing that unifies the county is beautiful property and gorgeous countryside. Landlocked Wiltshire shares its borders with other southern counties, including Dorset and Hampshire, all of which fell historically within the Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Wessex. Its rural landscape is also home to more ancient Neolithic sites, such as Stonehenge, whose mysterious circle of monoliths remains a place of pilgrimage today. Much of Wiltshire's chalky uplands and lush pastures stand testament to its rich farming heritage, and its swathes of open countryside remain a draw for many in search of a rural bolt hole. The average detached house in Wiltshire, of which this is not an example, costs £300,000. Now that's 15% above the national average. Why so expensive? Well, basically because of the M4. Great motorway links and rail links back into the capital makes Wiltshire the edge of the bearable daily commute when you still have ravishing countryside and beautiful properties. If you don't believe me, take a look. £325,000 would get you this four-bedroom listed barn conversion in Lynham, which provides inventive open-plan living areas. On the market at £595,000, this extended four-bedroom thatched cottage in all cannings dates back to the late 18th century and offers up a lovely light interior downstairs along with attractive gardens outside. Or if your budget can stretch to £680,000, what about this four-bedroom thatched property in Idmiston? Its reception rooms are filled with natural light and the master suite leads out onto a veranda, a great vantage point from which to enjoy views over the garden. So Wiltshire has some blooming nice properties and as spring tumbles in over the county, we have selected three of them to show today's house buyers. So why don't you get to know them? Meet Ray, a company director, and Sarah, an HR manager, who live in Ray's four-bedroom home in Hertfordshire. Ray's lived here all his life, having inherited it from his father. Right now, they're in the throes of organising their wedding and are keen to buy their first home together well away from this busy commuter heartland. This is one of the natural beauty spots of Kings Langley, railway line and the M25. Um, as you can see, not the most attractive part of the village, but unfortunately quite essential and one of the reasons why we're deciding to move on. We do spend quite a lot of our time walking at the moment. Obviously having two dogs means that, that we have to walk a lot uh, and our favourite is going to, to the woods at the weekend. So we do want somewhere where we've, where we've got access to, to lots of walks, lots of public footpaths uh, on the doorstep. They've opted for Wiltshire, which has good M4 access for Sarah to get to Heathrow where she works. Ray, however, has his own pet supplies business, so amongst other factors, he'll be needing space to work from home. The features that I'll be looking for in our new property would be a study, reasonable size study, um, potentially a room that we can use as a gym, um, uh, have a nice living space, um, definitely still need to keep an ensuite bathroom. Four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. Large kitchen. There we are, you've got more of a list. With an there. island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd quite like a utility or a boot room because when we bring the dogs in and they're muddy, um, at the moment they come straight into our lounge area. So it'd be really good to have somewhere to, to wipe off the muddy paws and, and store the wellies. Outside, they want an acre of land so that as well as the dogs, they can add sheep and chickens to their animal menagerie. On top of that, they're also keen on the possibility of having a holiday let. Just as well, they're flexible on the form their country home might take. 
we're not really that bothered about the style of property we're looking for as long as it's large and airy uh, and has the things that, that we particularly want. Uh, we're quite happy with whether it's Georgian, Victorian um, or, or much Reason more barn modern conversion. barn conversion. Yeah. Sarah sold her house three years ago and with Ray's property on the market for £475,000 they've got a healthy sum to buy their first home. Our budget for our next move is £600,000. These days it's fairly unusual for someone to have lived their whole life in the same property since the day they were born right up until their 40s. So I imagine that Ray's going to be quite sad to be leaving the old place. But he is, on the other hand, leaving it for a very good purpose. He's getting married to Sarah and we are going to find them their marital home. Fingers crossed. Let's hope Wiltshire has everything they're looking for. Sarah and Ray are keen to base their house search in the Marlborough area, where Sarah has family, which gives her relatively easy access to the M4 for her commute to Heathrow twice a week. We've lined up three very different Wiltshire properties to whet their appetite, but I won't be revealing the price of each until they've had a guess first. The last of these will be our mystery house, which, as ever, is designed to challenge their property preconceptions. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Welcome to Wiltshire. You ready for some house hunting? Absolutely. And your budget has changed in the right direction. It's going upwards. What happened there? Uh, we have an option uh, if my mum um, comes with us and we find a suitable annex property uh, to use some of the proceeds of the sale of her house as well. So wow. we have a, a slight increase if, if there's a suitable annex for mum. Slight being how much? Um, 150,000 on top of the 600,000 pounds that we already have. Oh, so we can go up to 750? We can indeed. Nice. But that has to have an annex. It does. So if we get the annex for your mum, does that mean that the holiday let idea has bitten the dust? Uh, we, yeah, if, if we can find the right property um, that fits that nice. spec, then yes. Because yeah, this is a big move for you, isn't it? You're getting married. There's got a lot be... going on. Yeah. And, but you haven't moved since wherever? No, I've never moved, so this will be, this will be quite an experience. So I'm looking forward to it. So are you sad about leaving the house? Um, well, I will be, but, you know, things have to change. So there's actually lots of properties to sell with your mum's place as well. There are, yes. But only one to buy. So let's go and find it. Excellent. Come with okay. me. For their budget of £600,000, Ray and Sarah are looking for a country home that provides light, spacious living areas for them and the dogs to mingle, a large kitchen diner, four bedrooms, preferably with an ensuite, an office, a gym, and an acre of land. However, they would increase the budget to £750,000 if there was an annex for Sarah's mum, or the potential for a holiday let. As we get our house search underway, we're going all out for location and heading to the village of Blunsdon, some 10 miles from Marlborough. Surrounded by peaceful countryside, it's a place with strong community spirit, what with a shop run by volunteers next to the village hall and a local pub. Our first house lies on the edge of the village and its modern exterior is rather deceptive, as inside does provide the airy living spaces thereafter. So, come into pole position. I want you to get the full glory of the property. This is the property I want to show you. Okay. First okay. impressions. Looks good. It's nice. Nice, good. Nice. Interesting roof. The, the stone part of the building is a 19th century building. And then it's been extended in the 80s. You can see the, the red brick part is an extension. It's very low slung, the house. Most of the rooms are downstairs. There is an upstairs portion. What about the size of the garden? Yeah, I think that's OK. The garden's that's great. Quite, I love yes. the walled aspect. It's quite yeah. good for, Looks the, great. for the dogs. It's yeah. great character. Despite appearances from the outside, there's no need for them to worry about ceiling heights inside. Here we come. Here we go, straight into the kitchen. Big kitchen. Big, it's got your island. Island. Yeah, nice island in the centre. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, very nice. Lots and lots of light, so you've got triple aspect. Yeah. yeah. High ceilings. High, high ceilings. 
Yeah. This is partly because you, you, know, you don't like the low seconds. Yeah, you got that. Yeah. yeah, you got that bit ticked. Very nice. Good. Well, then you might be pleased with the rest, then. Come on through here. This is the sort of, as you see, very open plan, living, dining, relaxing space. <laughs> very nice. nice, bright and airy, very open plan. It's very clinical, very straight, very smooth. Yeah, it's not, it's not cuddly country cottage. Yeah. yeah. You didn't really want I that. quite like that, yeah. I quite like the fact that it's not country cottage. Yeah. Let's take a look at the dining room. It's, um, this is where they dine. <laughs> Would it be where you dined? I think it's a bit small. For a small for a diner, probably a very good study, it I'd imagine. Be, it would be a good study. That's a good sign, you're already reconfiguring the house. We could put the table and chairs in the space where the grand piano is. Ah, it's all coming together nicely. OK, we're going to do a little twist up the spiral staircase to check out the space here. We'll explore the other rooms on the ground floor later, but let's get their thoughts on upstairs. So this is slightly um, odd because we've got two bedrooms up the spiral staircase from the living space. And at the moment, there's no ensuite. So it's essentially two waterless bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit peculiar if you had guests, which I'm assuming that's what they'd be for you. Because it's a sort of like guest suite. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you've got this space and then also... Got here. Oh my god. <laughs> used to be the playroom for the kids. So it's actually a huge space, so I don't quite know what you would do with that. We could put mum in there. I'll put the mum in there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, I think it'd be okay, guest bedroom. It's um it's it's got some ceiling height. Yeah. Um and then the other room we could turn into a bathroom, couldn't we? Next door, the second bedroom is a good size and could easily accommodate a bathroom suite. The other three bedrooms are back on the ground floor and all file off the hallway. One is a potential double with doors to the garden. And next door is a smaller but bright single, both serviced by the family bathroom. But right at the end of the hall is where they would sleep. And finally, the master bedroom. It's quite a lot of storage, assuming that these are all cupboards. Yep, they are all cupboards. It's nice for the doors to the garden. It's a nice touch. Yeah. Very bright again. Nice high ceiling still. You got an ensuite shower room and toilet. Uh, uh, excellent. Good. That's good. Is that sort of adequate spatial space wise? I mean, I have to be honest. I was hoping for a little bit more room, a little bit more space because where we are at the moment, we've got four bedrooms. We've got a nice open plan lounge, um, and it just feels a little bit smaller. I don't know if I'm right or wrong in saying that yeah, than I think what we've you're currently right, got. Okay. Why don't we take a look outside? Because there's a little bit more I can show you. Okay, there. lovely. This property offers an array of light living areas that they can adapt to suit their lifestyle with the dogs, who can dry off their paws in the adjacent utility room, something Sarah really wanted. The double garage block outside addresses Ray's request for more space. So, come in here. It's a good, nice, boarded space. Yeah. Heating, electricity. I'm not sure what we'd do with it, but I'm sure I could find something to put in here. You could certainly glaze the, the garage and make it your gym. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Back full circle to the hub of the garden. Is it, is it a good size for you? The garden's a good size, yeah, and it's, it's quite pretty. I like it. I like the walled. Yeah, the wall, wall is lovely. Garage is nice. Because this is actually only a third of an acre. You said you wanted an acre. Yeah, I don't think it's sheep and chickens kind of garden, but it's it's good enough for the dogs. Um, it's a good yeah. enough size. Yeah, uh, I agree, yeah. yeah. How much do you think this little slice of Wiltshire costs? Um, I you go first. think £525,000. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to go four ninety. Four ninety. OK, well, up until about... Three or four months ago, this was on at 590. It's now on at 550. Mm. So, you were closer. So, just bear in mind that even though this is not massively bigger than the, the property in terms of space that you're living in now, it's the location that you're paying for in many yeah. ways. Mm. Yeah. So, Wiltshire is an expensive county. 
Why don't you have a look around inside and out, and then I'll meet you at the front, and then we can push on. Profitable venture. Hey, welcome to Ramsbury. As we're a primarily arable um, producer, we produce barley, and that is uh, the main constituent of beer. And we wanted very much to add value to our product. There are several steps in the process uh, that we don't get paid for in, in other crops. You know, we sell wheat, it goes to a miller, it goes to the shop, it goes, you know. We wanted to cut out a lot of those steps, so therefore, malting barley, we grow it, we store it, we get it to the brewery, we make the beer, and we sell it to the consumer. So hopefully, uh, it, it has added value. And it's been very, very successful. And if you ultimately decide and 60 gallons of beer a day. And it's testament to the fact that diversified farms can tap into lucrative profits from their produce. We continue our house search 18 miles from Marlborough in the village of Brummham, which along with an array of amenities, including a post office, a local butchers and a pub, also boasts an impressive grade one listed church. Our second property not only comes with history of its own, but it's hopefully the upsize they were looking for. Here we are, number two. Uh, different proposition altogether. Much better. Yep. It's a house. It is a house. Not just a house, it's a farmhouse. <gasps> Yay. Yay. It's 250 years old in parts. Um, and as I say, it was the farmhouse to the farm that still surrounds it. But it's separate from that. Ray, what did you think from the outside? Oh, it's very nice. It's lovely. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a house. It's a good size. Yeah. Interested. OK, so I'm going to go around. The, this is the back of the house. I'm going to see the front. I hope we can build on their enthusiastic first reaction to this handsome farmhouse, which, along with an impressive front facade, has plenty of character still intact on the inside. Here we go. OK. <laughs> Come on into the wall. Here we have the, what's well, the sitting room? Fabulous. Yeah, nice, like it. It's lovely. You said the fire was a bit small. In the room it was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is much, much bigger. It is, it's amazing. Well, this could be the snug because across the hallway they can really spread out. And here is another mighty big room. Wow, this is huge. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. It's a great room. So if that's your sort of snug winter sitting yeah. room, this could be your day-to-day -day sitting this room. This is an amazing sized room. It'd be great for uh, our larger dog. Yes, it could be in his kennel. Yes. <laughs> Next door, the kitchen also provides ample space for them and their dogs. Now, this is the kitchen. Um, the side of the house. Hmm. It's a strange shape. Yeah, it's long and thin. It is. Uh, you've got a very fine uh, range at the end, and then it sort of goes along here. And then at the other end, you've got utility end, if you like, and then through there, a huge dog room mm -hmm. with a separate entrance out into the garden. Excellent. It wasn't what I pictured in terms of, uh, you know, a uh, family kitchen. I think it would need replanning. I think you could make better use of the space. The kitchen flows through to an enormous dining room, so the sum of the two parts gives them a huge area for cooking and eating. Also leading off the hallway is a ready-made office for Ray, and the generous proportions continue upstairs. 
So nice big landing. Oh, brilliant. We've got <laughs> oh, five, very nice. five, nice. five nice. bedrooms off Falling here. Falling in love with this house. <laughs> this is a sort of one of the smaller bedrooms. Is it? Oh, really? Are you, is it growing <laughs> on you? Yeah. 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 Good, good. I like it. But they're great proportioned rooms, the original beams and the sort of high ceilings. The other four bedrooms off the landing are all large enough to be doubles and also give them the space they might need for the future. But we'll take a peek at the largest. Here we are. Yep. <laughs> Good, isn't it? You can walk around the bed. <laughs> you can definitely walk around the bed. You've got lots of storage. Where you've are you got... going to put your clothes? Well, you've got another three, four Oops, bedrooms so... <laughs> to choose from. And there's a lovely family bathroom next door, which they've done up very nicely. It's a big and spacious. And windows. Yay! Overlooking the farmyard. <laughs> They seem pleased with the bedroom sizes so far, but now for a big surprise, because upstairs on the second floor, the sixth bedroom gives them a suite of their very own. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> you what a great room. Because <laughs> you bang your head on that side. <gasps> wow. Oh. But remember, the catch is that this is a plus mum house. Mm. Not that's a catch, of course, that's a great bonus, but uh, <laughs> in terms of we have to find some ways of two, lots of you can live here together. And we're not quite done yet. <laughs> Come on downstairs. There's also a great dressing room on this floor with an adjoining storeroom also tucked into the eaves. And outside offers up the possibility of a small annex for Sarah's mum with a vaulted ceiling and it comes complete with its own kitchen. The garden also has an unexpected treat in store for our fitness fanatics. So you'll notice you'll have, you have a heated swimming pool in your back garden. <laughs> it was on your wish list. It, well, it wasn't, but it might, it might be nice. But this is your garden. Wraparound garden, it's probably about a quarter of an acre, I'd say. Stunning view. Garden's fine for me. I think the house is brilliant. Yeah, the house um, is. I'm just concerned about the annex potential. So how much do you think it's on the market for? I think it's top of our budget. Yeah. $7.50, if not more. OK, I'm going to go seven thirty-five. Seven thirty-five. OK, well, this is, this is a substantial listed building mm -hmm. in a very beautiful bit of Wiltshire. But it could be yours for seven two five. Wow. That's what it's on the market for. Did yeah. you bring your checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sold hook, line and sinker? Oh, I love it. Absolutely. The house is amazing. Absolutely. Right. Mm. No, I agree I'd with forego you. everything else. Including where your mum lives? No, I think <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, that would be it, the yeah. compromise. We'd have to work something out, wouldn't we, for that? This house, I think, requires a good walk around with a pen and a paper and a head scratching and moving things around. So I'm going to send you back in. And then I'll see you at the front. Okay. Okay. Think. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On the market for seven hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds, this historic farmhouse has space in abundance for family and dogs, providing them with two living rooms, six bedrooms, one with its own master suite, a small annex, all wrapped up in a quarter of an acre garden, with the added benefit of a swimming pool. And it's set in open countryside with M4 access for Sarah to get to her job to the west of London. The moment we walked into this property, we both gave each other a look as if to say, yeah, this is very homely, we could work in this, you know, it's very comfortable. So, yeah, we could, with a few changes, we could make this place, yeah, a really nice home for us. This house makes me feel like I want to get the checkbook out. It's just, uh, it's everything that we wanted. Um, I think we'd have to work around the annex element of it, but I think there's scope to do that in the garage. I really like it. So, uh, through the back door, we came in through the front, but you know, in a house that you've almost moved into, I think it's appropriate <laughs> to leave through the back door. As evening falls over the Wiltshire countryside, the first day of our house hunt draws to a close. With a 
top budget of £750,000, Sarah and Ray want to whisk themselves and their dogs away from the hectic streets of King's Langley, Hertfordshire and start their married life together in rural Wiltshire. Of the two properties we've shown them so far, the farmhouse seems to be their firm favourite. But coming up, can they get past their first impressions of our mystery property? Probably not your style. <laughs> no. And I visit a farm that's literally buzzing with business ideas. Day two of our property search here in Wiltshire for Sarah and Ray. And I have to say I'm a little bit perplexed, a bit perplexed about what exactly they want to get for their money. Because they loved the house yesterday, but they couldn't really see where Sarah's mum was going to go. And I'm, I'm questioning whether they could ever afford to really have the separation they want in one property. But the mystery house today is going to offer them space for mum and also reintroduce the long-forgotten holiday let. And it will either confirm that they want those things or sweep them off the drawing board forever. After a good night's sleep, how are you thinking about the house yesterday? Still excited? Yeah, I think we've got, uh, we've got some things to find out about it, if it's, if it's going to be a goer in terms of planning um, and how mum would fit into that, but we're still excited by that property. Yeah, it's still a fabulous property, it's just whether or not we can make it work for us, that's all. Our mystery property takes us to the village of Sutton Benger, which falls right within Ray and Sarah's preferred location and gives them those cycle paths they wanted right on their doorstep, with a welcome pint on tap at the two local pubs. Among the array of attractive buildings lining its country lanes is its Grade 2 listed church. Right on the edge of the village is our mystery house proposition, which has more to it than meets the eye. Come with me, past the fortress of Leylandai, to see the mystery house. Why is it a mystery? This property needs a bit of work, a bit of vision, but it actually offers everything you want and some. Because this is not only a house for you and your mum, it's a house for you and your mum and a holiday let. Oh, oh interesting. In a very good location. Oh. Yeah. No, it's interesting because you can really see the things you could do to it to make it more attractive from the outside. Location wise, it's one of the villages that we wanted to be in anyway. It is, yeah. Their confident optimism is encouraging, but now it's time to test their creative vision as we explore inside. Come on in. So it's quite busy. Yes. Probably not your style. No. But what I need you to do is to think past, you know, the cosmetic things. It's not so bad. You're it's right. okay. There's some character there. You know, it's not a bad fireplace. I like the beams. There's additional space for the dogs beyond the sitting room in the conservatory, but will the kitchen measure up? Come through into the kitchen. So this would have been the scullery to the original farmhouse, and this is all extension here on this side. It's actually not a small kitchen diner. You're right, actually, it's quite a good space. It's a good space, and there's some nice kitchen units. It's just there's something... Needs I think it's the headroom just in this section. Yeah. It needs a bit of reorganising, I think. The kitchen extends into a utility area, which then weaves through into a completely self-contained part. It's actually, a, again, a big space, sitting room, and you know, quite a big kitchen. Yeah, I think it'd be quite a good space for my mum. Um, it's, it would be the biggest kitchen she's ever had. And then actually there's a, there's a bedroom up top, so this whole unit would be self-contained for your mum. OK. Or it could be the holiday let, because on the other side is another option. Mm. To the rear of the utility room is another small wing with its own entrance hall and sitting room, currently set up as a home office. Upstairs are two potential double bedrooms, both of which are serviced by a useful shower room. Back through the main house, the staircase leads up to three further bedrooms, making six in total. There's a cosy double, and the other benefits from a skylight, which is also a feature of the family bathroom. But where will they sleep? And here's the master bedroom in your part. 
It's just very dark again, isn't it? But I think a lot of that is the paint and the wallpaper. Because yeah. there's an ensuite sort of dressing room, again, which is quite spacious. Lots and lots of storage. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's probably the best room on this floor. OK, so it's a challenge, the house. It's a challenge just to get your head around where everything is. So let's go out into the garden and then we can maybe kind of gather our thoughts. OK. OK. Ray and Sarah have been completely thrown by the number of rooms and possible living arrangements that our mystery house can accommodate. Granted, they'll want to put their mark on the interior, but it may also push them to question whether they really want everything they say they want. Outside, the secluded garden is the largest we've shown them. OK, so this is the garden, and it's actually a big plot. It's just under an acre, I'd say wrap around, including the uh, little paddock for the sheep. The garden's good, yeah, it's a good size. Could definitely see some chickens in here. Yeah, the garden's very nice. The, like dogs. the front garden with the sheep, brilliant. Yeah. Um, the dogs would be fine out here, wouldn't they? What about guessing the price? I can see you've answered most of the you know, questions that we asked. However, I think the price would be... 530. Okay? I, think it, I think it's higher than that. I think it's probably... It's, you know, it's probably late 6, 680. Well, you know, bearing in mind it's five minutes from the M4, it's got six bedrooms, potentially three kitchens, three staircases, an acre of land. 530 is a bit cheeky. It's actually on at 675. Hey. So you, uh, yeah, well you get the I crown this time. Out. Yes. Yeah. OK, so, I mean, it does offer on paper everything that you asked for. But have a look around inside and then we'll meet up front. Okay. Under budget at £675,000, our mystery property has challenged Ray and Sarah to seriously evaluate their wish list. Cosmetic alterations aside, this house would give them two living areas and a large kitchen diner, six bedrooms, including separate living quarters for Sarah's mother, and the potential for holiday guests. Just shy of an acre of garden, and it's located slap bang in their search area. Mystery House is a good choice. It answered all the questions. We've got the annex, we've got the holiday let, we've got accommodation for ourselves. The only thing that I find is the room's a little bit too small, a little bit too dark. So the living side of it, for Sarah and I's point of view, I don't isn't quite what we had in mind. I think for the money that we've got, I think it's possible to find what we're looking for, but, but losing maybe one, one of the elements, which would be the holiday let element. I think what we need to concentrate on looking for is a home for us, first and foremost. All done? Yes. Change of heart? No, I don't think so. OK. Let's go and gather our thoughts. For centuries, Wiltshire's countryside has been shaped by its traditional farming practices. And although sustaining farms as viable businesses has been increasingly challenging, here at Hill End Farm in the Dauncey Vale, a new generation of farmer has devised a winning and diverse formula for success. I've come to meet Kerry Cryer, whose family have owned their herd of pedigree British Frisians since 1910, making it one of the oldest in the country. We talk about diversification quite a lot on the show, about families trying to find ways of, of making farms survive. What was your answer? Because this is actually your mum and dad's mm. dairy herd. So when Chad and I came to live on the farm... Chad's we your husband. My husband, Chad. We realised that there wasn't going to be a way of getting a second income out of just milking. So we looked into diversification. Chad, with his fresh eyes, said, let's do something different. And I said, well, I can make cheese. And it was quite interesting because my great-grandfather would have made the Wiltshire loaf, the traditional Wiltshire cheese, um, and he would have sold it by horse and cart in Swindon. I now sell it by van in London. <laughs> While Kerry's expanding her cheese empire, the dairy farm's clover-rich pastures are helping feed her husband's bees, which provides another source of income. How's the bee honey business going? Very well. Chad's got 80 hives and... Of course, local honey is really, really popular. Um, many people believe it helps with hay fever if you take local honey. 80 is a lot, so they're spread out. You can't have 80 hives on one spot. No, because then they would be competing for the same mm. flowers. 
How many has he got there? One, two, three, about ten? About ten. I would say twenty would be the most you could possibly have in one site, but so, ten would be what he aims for. So do you sort of park your bees on other farms? That's or? right, yeah. Our hives are throughout North Wiltshire and South Gloucestershire. Do you have to rent those? Or presumably the farmers are quite happy to have bees. Yeah, it's a really good thing to have bees on your land because they help pollinate crops. Um, and also they're quite happy to have a few jars of honey as well. <laughs> Along with being the fifth generation cheese maker in her family, Kerry is nowadays the sole producer of the Wiltshire Loaf, a cheese so popular in the 18th century that it even gains a mention in one of Jane Austen's novels. Ah. And here are the Wiltshire Loaves. So cool because they look like loaves. Yeah. See, yeah. I got that instantly. <laughs> so these are the ones that are ready? Yep, these will be going out to the market this weekend. And these are the youngest ones down here. So how long does it take to get to this stage? These ones are just two months old. Are there any sort of like sort of things that you have to watch out for? Presumably you can't leave them too long. There are so many factors that influence cheese making. The temperature at every stage, the humidity at every stage, and you're right, the time that you do things for. Um, we need to keep turning the cheeses regularly so they get even drying out. Mm -hmm. And so, how are they selling? Like hot cheeses? <laughs> yes. Hot loaves? They're selling really, really well. It's very hard for us to keep up the production to go with the sales. Along with 80% of Kerry's cheeses being sold at farmer's markets, she's also branched out into making butter, yoghurt and ice cream. But I'm yearning for some of that cheese. And here's the cheese. Kerry, you shouldn't have. It's like you knew I was coming. <laughs> Delicious. So this is the loaf. Yeah, the traditional Wiltshire cheese. This is, can I taste? Please do. Yeah. So is it su is it a success financially? I mean, you make yeah, it? it's really good. Um, it's employing myself, my husband, and also my brother-in-law, who's just moved onto the farm as well. And coming up, I mean, do you have more plans? Do you think it's going to be a, a sort of successful, ever-growing concern? I started doing this because I wanted to keep the farm going. I love the grass. I love the cows. I love the milk. Couldn't get an extra fun income from the milking. And so I want our business to keep growing so that we can keep farming in the way we always have done. Well, I wish you all the best, not least, because it's really delicious. Thank you. Sneak a little bit in there. <laughs> and maybe we'll come back next year for some ice cream. That would be lovely. Mm. Well, that wasn't the most revelatory or life-changing of our mystery houses, but hopefully it might have brought things into focus for Ray and Sarah and made them decide what they do and don't want in their home here in Wiltshire. Let's go and find out. Hello, guys. Hi. Hiya. Time for the moment of reckoning. Will we find out which one you like best or least or both. So it's easiest if we go through them one by one, if that's OK. Yeah. Can you spin your minds back to yesterday morning when we looked at the house with the walled garden? What are your thoughts about that now? I think the, the garden was beautiful. The living space was OK. The bedroom space was just too small. For us. Yeah, the bedroom's a little bit tiny, I think, for us. Um, the corridor, especially, I don't think would really be very workable, mm. just because it was quite narrow. But we did like the idea of the layout, you know, the living quarters, bedroom quarters, one side, that was nice, but just a little bit more space, that's all it needed. And what about house number two, because that was a much bigger proposition? Yeah. Oh, that was completely different, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, it was a great, great house. Lovely rooms, brilliant staircase, an amazing landing, yeah, very nice. I think the house is obviously big enough for three people to live in. It just had so many rooms. Um, but it wasn't what we wanted, and, and it isn't what my mum wants either. She wants her independence. Um, and so, really, we were looking at a, a property with a, a completely separate annex so that she's close, but she's, she's got her own kitchen and bathroom, etc. And as much as there was another um, building outside, I just think it would be a bit unfair to expect her to, to live in the shed. So that house gave you lots to think about? Then day two, we looked at the mystery house. Thought-provoking? Yeah, I think uh, the holiday let issue with the mystery house uh, made us think that, realistically, that's not for this move. It's, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's going to... To find a house with an annex for the money that we've got, um, maybe with a bit of land, uh, is going to be enough. Uh, no holiday let to go with. Great location. Fabulous village. Um, I like the gardens, um, but uh, yeah, as you say, I think we have to realise that we can't have the annex and a, a holiday let. 
I know it's a lot to, to juggle with the mum and the holiday lets and the wedding and all these things and your jobs. But I really do wish you all the best and I hope you find something to live your marital life in bliss. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know bluebells are not unique to Wiltshire, but they do lift the soul after what was quite a challenging week. Not because of Ray and Sarah, who are absolutely lovely, but because their property goalposts kept on moving. First it was a holiday let and their house, and then a house was their mum. And even though they really liked house number two, and I think they'll definitely go back and visit it, sometimes on escape we have to accept that the best thing we can do is help people decide what they don't want. So, join us next time for more escaping. Meanwhile, enjoy the countryside. <laughs>